Good afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody is having a great day. I've had a chance to get out today. Man, it is a beautiful day here in Alabama. Great weather, no rain, and uh, just a beautiful day. You know, as I've gotten older, you know, I heard a lot of people talking about, you know, giving back and making a difference in their community and doing, and you, and you hear some of the, the negative Nancy say, well, how can one person make a difference? How can one person make a difference in the lives of others? How can one person make a difference in their community? And strangely, we see it though. We see it in, in a lot of people. There are these, these special people in our communities that step up when there's a need and make things happen. And our guest today is one of those people. He saw a need in our community. He didn't sit back. He had an idea. He wanted to help others. Not only has he fulfilled that initial idea, he has now taken that idea to the next level and he's empowering others. He's empowering our youth to give back to people in need. Hey everybody, this is Morris Lillianthal and welcome to the Mo Show Live. I'm a lawyer here in Huntsville, Alabama. And I started this show to share stories of people and organizations that are doing great things in our community. And so I'm really excited to share with you our guest today, Rodney Smith Jr. of the founder of Raising Men Lawn Care Service. And before I formally introduce Rodney, for everybody watching, if you're watching now on Facebook, we'll be monitoring the comments and feed. If you've got questions or comments for Rodney or you wanna say hello, please say hello to us. If you've got a question about Raising Men Lawn Care Service or, or you've had an experience with this organization, please please let us know. We'll, we'll put those comments out there. But let's get started. Uh, Rodney is uh, lives here in Huntsville, Alabama. He is a native of the island of Bermuda. Rodney grew up with his father uh, in the construction industry, building homes. So Rodney knows um, the value of hard work and learned that at an early age. He is a graduate of uh, Alabama A&M University. He's currently doing his master's work in social work at Alabama A&M University and set to graduate this May. And he is the founder of Raising Men Lawn Care Service. I'm so excited to bring to the audience today, uh, Rodney Smith. Rodney, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I really appreciate uh, your time today. I know you, you got a lot on your plate with school and with the organization and, and, and helping others. So I appreciate you you taking a few minutes today with our audience to share what great work this organization is doing and what great work the students and the young people that you're empowering are doing for others in our community. So I think maybe the best place to start, Rodney, is kind of tell people how this how this uh, movement and this organization got started. Can you tell us the the original story about how uh, Raising Men Lawn Care Service got started? Oh, sure, sure. So it happened about uh, January, or oh, not January, July, August, around that time in 2015, I was driving from school. And as I was driving, I saw an elderly man outside cutting his grass. It looked like he was struggling, so I pulled over and helped him. That night, um, I came up with the idea to mow lawns in the Huntsville area and nearby areas free for the elderly, disabled, single parent mothers and veterans. At first, my goal was to reach 40 lawns by the end of winter. I thought it was reasonable with me being in college, you know, cutting in between classes and on the weekends, but I reached 40 lawns so quick that I up my goal to 100 lawns. Then after I reached 100 lawns, um, the idea of raising men lawn care service came about and here we are today. Wow, I mean, so, this was something that you, you just rode by, riding down the street. You see a need, and your heart mm -hmm. and, and your and your soul says, "I need to help these people." And you got out and helped them. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because I remember, like, a few years earlier, I had like a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God, telling telling him, asking him to use me as his vessel. So I said, "God, please just use me any way that you see fit." And it didn't happen right there. It didn't happen at that moment, but. Later on, I realized this was the moment that he showed me that he what, what he wanted me to do. So this is what I'm doing today, cutting lawns free for the elderly, disabled, senior parent mothers and veterans. Well, that's amazing. And and I know that, you know, you were kind of saying that it started as one lawn and then you, you kind of set a personal goal, I guess, of, of 40 lawns. And then the next thing you knew, you, you had surpassed <laughs> that goal and, and you set a bigger goal. And then so yeah. it. As you started to grow, where you started to do 100 lawns, and, and mm -hmm. that was your goal, and you surpassed that goal, did you start then thinking on a bigger scale, uh, on the scale of, of raising men lawn care service, where you thought, maybe I can empower others to come in and help me with that? How did that start? Yeah, that just came naturally, you know. 
Um, I can't even remember the exact day it came about. I, I remember being at a lawn. I think it was around my 80th lawn where this lady had a son uh, that she wanted her son to get involved. So that kind of started the whole idea of getting kids involved and using the t-shirt system like the karate system. So they, they would start with the, the white shirt and make their way up. So that kind of started around my 80th lawn. The whole idea of raising my lawn care service. I remember the exact day when the name came about. I was on a t-shirt company's website just trying to come up with different ideas of what to call it. And I came across this little icon with a guy moving and something just clicked. Raising my lawn care service and I just stuck with the name. Yeah. Well, I love your logo. I, I think it, <laughs> you got one of the shirts on now. That it's kind of yeah. like a baby crawling and then a little child and then as the child gets older and then the person gets older and they've got the lawnmower. That's a, that's a, it's kind of foreshadows that, that you can start giving back to others at a really young age and it allows you to grow as, as you get older and, 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 you know, giving to others and allows you to grow as a person. Yes, sir. Um, and, and, and at first, it was, I had two ideas for a name. First, it was raising men. Then I had Raising Kings, but the Raising Men name stuck, and I just put a king on top of the, the older guy's head. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, he certainly. Like You're a, welcome to stand up and show everybody the shirt. I think. All right. Good. He has a crown on his head. Oh. Hello? You're there. You're okay. Oh, it, it clicked off. I, I'm not sure if you can see me, but it has a crown on top it. of his yeah. head. You're fine. Just look right in the camera, honey. That's fine. We can see you just fine. Oh, that's your Um. So, um. Can you kind of tell everybody now what the mission of your organization is? What's what's the mission, and what what are you looking? What what are you trying to accomplish, uh, in addition to doing yard work for for those in need? Okay, well, it's to get kids involved. You know, in today's world, a lot of kids are inside playing video games and not outside doing activities. So the whole idea of raising my lawn care service is to mentor kids and show them the importance of giving back to the community doing lawn care. And the whole idea and the goal of the of foundation is to expand nationwide and eventually get chapters in all 50 states and eventually worldwide someday. Wow, that's 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 a great aspiration and I can tell you what, you're off to a great start with it, no doubt about it. Um, so tell us, I know we were talking before we went we went live that, that you've kind of got two ways you kind of bring kids in, you, you kind of have the, the, the main, I guess the home chapter here in Huntsville where we're located. Mm -hmm. And then kids can volunteer that way and, and join you guys yeah. as you're going out and doing yards. And then you also have something for, that, that allows children to participate, even if they don't have a chapter in their state right now, where they can participate in what I think you call the 50-yard challenge. Can you kind of tell our audience a little bit about what the 50-yard challenge is and how if they have children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews, maybe how they could get involved? Okay, sure. So the 50-yard challenge um, is issued to kids nationwide and even worldwide. Um, so let's say you have a kid in North Carolina and they accepted the 50 yard challenge. All they would need to do is draw a sign saying, I accept the 50 yard challenge. In return, they will receive a white Raising Man Lawn Care Service shirt along with shades and air protection. Once they mow 10, 10 yards, they get an orange shirt. Once they mow 20, they get a green, 30 or blue, 40 or red, and 50 or black. And once they reach 50, we drive or fly to them. Um, we do lawns with them. Um, we give them the black shirt for reaching 50 along with five different color Raising Man Lawn Care Service t-shirts, and we also surprised them with a brand new lawnmower. Currently, we have about 60 kids nationwide taking part of it, and we also have two young men in England as well taking part. Wow. So so for everybody just tuning in, I, I had some people, it looks like they're just tuning in. My, this is Morris Lewenthal, and the, this is the Mo Show Live, and my guest today is Rodney Smith, Jr., the founder of Raising Men Lawn Care Service, and, and this organization was started by Rodney uh, back in 2015, to do lawn service care for those in need, the elderly, the disabled, veterans, single mothers, and it has grown to now empowering young people to participate in this movement to empower them, to give them a sense of self-worth, community and civic organization, and to help those in need. And so, Rodney, what you're saying then is, is, is that you've got kids that are out there that are now mowing 50 yards as a part of this challenge. Have you had children reach that goal already? Yeah, um, we had about 11 kids so far that have reached their 50th yard. Currently, we have 60 kids that are currently taking part of it, but we have 11 kids that have already completed 
completed the challenge. We had kids in Laredo, Texas, a family of five. Then we had a kid in Marion, Ohio, and a kid in uh, Wichita, Kansas, a kid in, uh, who is it? Two kids in North Carolina, another kid in Pennsylvania, I believe. So it's growing. Kids are always wanting to take part of it. Um, so in the summer, they, summer and spring, they cut lawns. In the winter, we rake leaves. And in, no, in the winter, we um, shovel snow and in the driveways and the sidewalks. And in the fall, we rake leaves. So it's a year-round type of thing. So not, it's not yeah. just one time in the year. And to kind of give 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 our viewers an idea, and, and people that may be watching this replay, can you kind of give us an idea of how many kids so far have participated uh, in in the in the organization? Whether even not just the challenge, but maybe have come out for a few times here and there to help help in one of the, the uh, you know days of, of going out in the folks' yard. Okay, well, we had about 150 to 160 kids that have taken part in raising my loan care service since we have started in 2016, January. So and it's been a lot of kids, and kids are signing up every week and month to take part in the challenge. So it's constantly growing. And the if, ultimate goal is to also get into schools and yeah, get into schools and get kids involved that way as well. And I got to ask you because I was asking you this before we went live. Can you tell people how, how many lawns have have you you mowed personally as a part of this movement since you started this in 2015? Oh, it's been a lot. It's, it's probably about 2,000 loans I've made personally since the whole start of everything. So it's been a lot of loans. That's amazing. And that's just you. And so if you look at the kids, you're going to have even, uh, you know, even more, you know, probably several, you know, probably four or 5,000 loans. That, that's amazing. Yeah, right? it's, just, it's just going to keep it, constantly growing. And if people, and if young people that are watching that have kids or, you know, or mm -hmm. young people are watching, we have people who have children or grandchildren, nieces and nephews. If they want to join this movement, if they want to maybe look at starting a local chapter or maybe going in and, you know, participating in the 50-yard challenge, what do they need to do? That? How, how, do they, how can they join in this movement? Well, they can simply go to our website at weareraisingmen.com and they can just fill out the form underneath the 50-yard challenge form or start a chapter form, whichever yeah. they prefer. And, and I do want to clarify something real quick too. This is not just young men, certainly by the name, but young young ladies oh, yeah, and young yeah. girls that want to participate can certainly participate as well. Okay. Yeah, of course. We uh, have a, a good bit of young ladies that yeah. are taking part. And 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 the other thing I wanted to ask if, if people uh, you know have a see uh, some people in their community that may not be able, they're disabled, or maybe they're older and they can't mow their yards and they don't have the ability to pay for something. How can people nominate somebody to to be on the list to have you know yard work done by, by your organization? Um, they can simply go to our website at weareraisingmen.com. We have a form they can fill out. And once they fill that out, we'll go by, check it out, and just get the loan done for them. Yeah. And it's probably every two weeks we do the loan. So it's not just a one-time thing. It's a yearly thing. Okay, great. And and so I know that, you know, when you started, you started it here in Huntsville, but as I understand, you know, this is, is really spreading, not only through the 50-yard challenge where you may have young people in different areas, but you're looking to grow other chapters. Can you tell us about what you've done so far and, and what, the, what your goal is? Okay, yeah, we have about eight other chapters nationwide with the goal of getting in all 50 states. Um, we have a chapter in Laredo, Texas. We have a chapter in Marion, Ohio. We have a chapter in Crossfield, Tennessee. You have a chapter in Pennsylvania. Uh, can't even. We have a chapter in Florida, Michigan. That's six. We have a chapter back home in Bermuda, and we have a chapter in Minnesota, I believe. So the whole idea of raising men is spreading, and eventually we would like to just get in all 50 states and eventually worldwide because. We have found that this is an, not just a need here in the United States of America, but it's a need worldwide. Yeah. Did you? Did you? I gotta ask. Did you mow a bunch of yards when you were growing up in Bermuda? Were you doing oh, a lot of lawn work? No. I, when I when I was growing up, I did not like to mow the lawns. So God <laughs> took something that I disliked and turned it into something that I now love to do. So it's kind of crazy. That is crazy. Me. That's great. Well, I want to yeah. thank some people that are joining us: uh, Brett Jonesy, um, Corley Richardson. Uh, Mitch Jackson, uh, Bernard Nomberg, Jason Knight, and uh, Sally Dunkley. We've got some questions here from Brett. I'm going to, I'm definitely, Brett, I'm going to get to your question. I appreciate that. Uh, one question I've got uh, is from my friend Mitch Jackson out in California. 
And okay. Mitch was asking, Mitch is, uh, has a, a passion for giving back and doing a lot of civic good. And Mitch and I are both share a, a, a similar vein in that we're both members of the Rotary Club. He's a member of his club, local club out in California. And as I mentioned to you before we went on air, that I'm a member of the Madison Club here in, in uh, the Huntsville area. And have you ever thought about teaming up with local organizations like that to try to help spread the word or, or to try oh, to yeah. get teamed up? And have you done that? And is there any opportunity if, if there are local Rotary Clubs out there that might want to help you know, spread the word or help start a chapter somewhere? Oh, yeah. We're always um, open to partnership with different organizations. That's one of the goals in 2018 that we would like to do, just partner up with different organizations and spread the word. Yeah, so definitely open to that. Well, we may hit you. We may hit you up on that. Okay, so we okay. we will definitely see how we can do to help you because I know there may be some local Rotary clubs out there that uh, that work with uh, young people uh, in, in yeah. clubs in high school that may be able to to be able to set you up to do that. So we'll definitely talk about that. Okay. Um, you know, one thing that you know, you know, we're sitting here. You and I are sitting here talking on Facebook Live mm -hmm. right now. And, you know, we hear a lot about people, uh, you know, one of the things that you talked about was, you know, sometimes young people are too much sitting behind a computer or too much sitting here with, with their iPhones or on the PlayStation or Xbox. And so there's a lot of negative things and spread about, about social media. But I think with your organization, you know, from what I've seen, Rodney, you guys have a strong <laughs> social media presence. You've got over 59,500 Facebook followers on your, your organization's page. I think you have over 10,000 followers on Instagram. Talk to me a little bit about how social media has helped your organization grow. Oh, well, yes. Well, social media is a huge part of Raising Man Lawn Care Service. It allows us to share everything we do with the world. Um, I remember it back in 2016, we went viral. Um, we was at a lawn one day, just mowing like how we normally do. Then all of a sudden, I saw likes just go up for some reason. I, I'm like, wow, why are we getting all these likes? This is when no one knew about us. Let me hit 600 likes at one lawn. By the time we finished at that lawn, it was at 800. Um, we drove to the next lawn about uh, 30 minutes away. By the time we made it to that lawn, it was about 1,000 likes. Then by the end of that night, it was 2,000 likes, um, 200,000 likes. And by the next morning, it was a million likes for one picture. And so social media has paid a huge part in our success and spreading the word about Raising Man Lawn Care Service. So we're very grateful for this tool. Well, and I think your organization is a great example of how you can take the power of social media to amplify the good of a few and, and spread that message to others. Um, it's true. I want to thank uh, Willie Lacey for joining us. We have a uh, mention from one of, one of your folks uh, with, with your organization, Miguel, uh, is it? Al Davia, senior. Yeah, Miguel. He, he wants the um, Portfield, Tennessee chapter. Miguel, Miguel says Miguel's joined us. We appreciate him joining us. He said that the uh, other chat that you also have a chapter in Utah. Yeah, you, Utah has a new chapter that's coming up. Yeah, they so, haven't got I mean, started yet, but they're going to start up in the spring. Yeah, that's we'll awesome. That. Um, so thank you, Miguel, for for your work with this great organization, and, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Um, you know. It's pretty amazing in doing some research and, and, and talking to some others in the community about everything you're doing. And I've certainly been mm -hmm. following your, your story on social media uh, as we just got through talking about how it's helping your organization. I know your organization has been featured in some national, the, the Today Show, USA Today, and a lot of local organizations. But I thought there was one really cool story I'd like for you to share with everybody. Can you tell us about being recognized by the Queen of England? Yeah, so um, I'm from the island of Bermuda, and Bermuda is colonized by England. Uh, someone nominated my name for the Queen's Award. So I flew back home just recently, about a few months ago, to accept the Queen's Award from the governor of, of Bermuda on the Queen's behalf. So that was pretty cool to receive that prestigious award. Well, just that's to really know that um, the Queen is watching, you know, that's kind of crazy. Well, you know, t did you ever think in 2015 when you're leaving campus at Alabama A&M, can you stop to, to see somebody that's struggling to mow their yard that it could turn into something you'd be recognized by the queen? Never. I, I, I would have never, if you would have batted me like a million dollars, I, I would have never thought this could even be possible because I just never thought that far. I just cutting grass at the moment, didn't know it would grow to a foundation and eventually get recognized by the queen. So I, I never would have thought. Well, that kind of brings me to what I wanted to ask you next. Where do you see Raising Men Lawn Care Service in the next 
you know, five years? What's your vision? Well, the goal of Raising Man Long Care Services is to expand in all 50 states. So I'd like to see a, a chapter in all 50 states. I would like to see Raising Man getting involved with more schools, school programs like elementary, um, high school. And I'd also like to see Raising Man Long Care Service go worldwide because it's a need worldwide. We, we have people in Australia wishing that this service was there. So what better way to do that than to take a chapter and start it over there? So that's the whole yeah. goal of Raising Man Long Care Service to spread worldwide. Well, I, I wish you uh, the best, and, and I know the people that are watching today, that are watching on the replay, and that are you know following you and your organization's mission on social media are, are doing nothing but, but cheering you on to, because I really think you're doing such a great service to not only the people that you're helping, the people that you're doing the artwork for, but empowering the young people to see what it's like to get back at an early age and to leave that impression of a sense of civic pride and a civic community uh, actionism to get out and help others. That's, that's amazing. Yes, sir. Um, well, you know, I, this, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't at least mention this, that I, that I know you are also individually, and it may turn into something that the organization's going to do, that you're also doing a lot of work with our local homeless here in, in the area. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with that as well? Yeah, so um, I, um, I helped the homeless here in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, back in 2016, I believe, I was heading towards heading to a lawn in Decatur. I stopped to the gas station and a homeless gentleman knocked on my window asking for a few dollars. Uh, I went inside the gas station and the lady told me that the homeless gentleman slept across from the field from the gas station that night before and it was real cold out. So that night I went back home on my Facebook page and I asked the Raising My Long Care Service family could they help me out by sending me donations of blankets and stuff that the homeless people would need for the winter. Someone suggested that I start an Amazon wish list page, and I did. I put a bunch of items that I wanted to give out to the homeless, and people just start sending stuff. So that's how the whole idea with helping the homeless came about. Um, that was about probably November sometime. So December came about, and I just, all the gifts that the people sent me, I wrapped them up, and I started giving them out to the homeless. And this past Christmas in 2017, I done something different. Um, I dressed up as Santa Claus, and I covered all the major cities in Alabama. So I started in Huntsville, then I went to Decatur, Alabama. I went to Florence. I went to Birmingham. I went to Tuscaloosa. I went to Montgomery. I went to Mobile. And I went to, Mo well, I think that's the major cities in Alabama. <laughs> and I just traveled to all those cities, dressing up as Santa Claus, giving gifts out to the homies that people have sent to my house for me to give out to them. Um, uh, probably a week before I got started, I had about, 15 people come to my house on a Saturday afternoon. We started about two o'clock and we finished about seven that night, just wrapping all the gifts that people sent for us to give out to the homeless. And I met up with different people along the way to help me out. Um, Miguel also came out in, who was it? Nashville, Tennessee. We also covered Nashville, Tennessee and Memphis, Tennessee as well. So we just gave out gifts to the homeless. And that just started from an idea of me meeting the homeless man one day on my way to a lawn. So. I hope to continue that as well. You know, Ronnie, it, it, it's so inspiring to me and uplifting to me to hear that, that you have one just circumstance that presents itself to your life. You, you have a, such a giving heart that you want to help somebody, but you don't help just that one person. You see beyond that one individual, you see the greater need and you don't think about it. You act mm -hmm. upon it. But what's your drive there? What's your mission? Hey, pardon? I couldn't. What's your passion? What, what, what? Why, what, what, what is driving you to, to, to go out in the community and, and to help these people in need? I, I think it's the way I was brought up. You know, my mom and dad always told me, give back when you can. And I always have ideas that come to me. So the idea will come to me, and it's, if it's about helping someone, I just go with it. So I believe ideas come to me for a reason. So when they come to me, I just go to action and put them to work. Well, keep putting them to work because you're doing great work. <laughs> um, and I know that you know, you've got to be immensely proud of, of the volunteers that are working with this organization and certainly the young children that are going out and doing. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what's the reaction when you, when you when you go out with a group of kids or, or you're hearing from kids that are going out and mowing people's yards, these people in need, what are these people's reaction? 
Well, at first, you know, when we first go to someone's house, they're surprised that we're doing it for free. Like, they, they never heard of someone mowing their lawn for free. And so they're real grateful by the time we finish their lawn because they never received a free service. For a lot of the kids, you know, sometimes the parents volunteer them. But once they get started with the program, they love coming out and helping out others. And you see that in a, in a lot of kids, all the kids that join, they might not want to come out on the first day, but by the end of that day, they want to come out again. They're calling us every, calling us up every weekend, asking to save their spot for that following weekend. So it's good to see that these kids want to put down the video games and come out and make a difference one loan at a time. Well, that's amazing. And I'm sure, I imagine that there's a lot of great friendships that are starting amongst oh. these kids that are that are going out and doing doing good together. Of course. I and mean, people, these guys and girls are making brotherhoods and sisterhoods, meeting different kids from all different types of backgrounds. So it's a beautiful thing to see. It really is. Well, Rodney, before we wrap up, I, I just want to, uh, you know, um, ask you, you know, how can uh, people you know, give back to your organization? If, if people want to support raising the in-lawn care service, um, what can they do in terms of either buying supplies, making donations or monetary donations? Can you tell us how we can help? Okay, well, if you would like to support Raising Men Lawn Care Service, you can go to our website, weareraisingmen.com. We have an Amazon wish list with a list of things that we can use. If you'd like to purchase something, it will be sent directly to us. Uh, we have I Support Raising Men t-shirts on our website that you can buy, and you can also donate on our website as well if you'd like to. Well, you know, folks, what I would tell you is, is that if um, – you know, if 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 you don't have, if maybe if you're not physically able to do it, or you don't, you're, you know, you don't have any children or grandchildren or somebody that can do it, you can give uh, back to this organization by supporting them financially. You can give back to this organization by sharing out Rodney's videos. I mean, I I'll I'll flip on Facebook or sometimes Rodney, and I'll see you have a live video feed just like this, and you and, and a crew are out, a bunch of kids are out doing somebody's yard. Yeah. And it amazes me to see how many people are just sitting there kind of watching you guys dig. So, oh, yeah, it's a lot. And, and so, you know, folks, share their mission by sharing their story, uh, by sharing this video uh, to others so other people can learn more about Raising Men Lawn Care Service. Oh. Rodney, I, I tell you, I, I want to thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart, not only for your time today, but, but for what you're doing for our community and, what you're, and the message that you're sending and how you're empowering our youth. Well, thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity. You know, I'm grateful for it. Well, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, Rodney, we've mentioned the website several times. And again, just for everybody watching, this is uh, Rodney Smith Jr. He's the founder of Raising Men Lawn Care Service. And their mission is to empower youth, uh, to give them a, a sense of pride and, and let them uh, develop as young people by giving back, by doing lawn care services for those in need, the disabled veterans. Uh, single mothers and, and uh, anybody else in need. But you can go to their website, and if you'd like to sign up to maybe look at starting a chapter in your area, I think you can probably contact your organization that way. If you are if you don't have a local chapter, you can go in and accept the 50-yard challenge that way where you sign up to be challenged to raise, uh, to mow 50 yards. Or you can um, go on there to nominate somebody who may need your organization's services. Um, and I think there's also a link there for the Amazon wish list as well. Yes, sir. Um, Rodney, thank you so much for everything you're doing, and thank oh, you thank so you. much for your time today. Anytime. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody. Please share the share the feed out so everybody can learn more about Rodney and his great organization, and I hope everybody has a great day.